Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. Welcome to Mighty and SF New Tech. Now's the time to grab a seat. And I am talking like a circus guy because I saw a circus last weekend. Ladies and gentlemen. Grab a seat, grab a seat. We're going to send John from the bar into the back. Now's the time we get serious. I know there are only 13 people here right now, but grab a seat. What we'd like to do is be a, a responsible and accountable for your time and everybody else's time. And we try to start as close to 7.30 as possible. I understand that's not always possible, but we do work for it. And what this means is that social time is now over. Put your toys back in your cubby holes and come join us up front. Who? I have kids, so I can say that. All right, guys, um, come and join us. You guys in the back, there's plenty of seats. We're gonna get started. We wanna make sure that everybody has uh, their eyes glued to the stage. We're gonna give our undivided attention to the presenters up front. These guys are sweating it out for you tonight. It's your job to make them sweat more. So, uh, where is a wireless? Do you have a wireless? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, come, come join us. Hassan, grab a seat. Lights. Lights. Are you asking me for lights? How's that? Mighty lights. I don't know if we can direct that at this point in time. You're dark. We're dark. I'm dark. Carrie, when you have a second. So thank you guys for joining us. I know you probably had some other choices tonight, and you chose to come to SF New Tech, which is awesome. Typically, we see between 100 and 300 people in this room, and uh, I find it, uh, uh, as, as the guy who's sending all the emails, it's my responsibility to make sure everybody has a good experience. So we try to get as many people in the room as possible through, a, you know, through email. Um, and I think you guys made the right choice. And what I found actually, I, I'm one of the guys that helped start meetup.com back in the day. And early, 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 early on, uh, there were meetups about everything. And even though there are now, it's the same deal. But like when they first started, I remember uh, going to a blogger meetup and uh, there were 20 people who were supposed to be there. And this is like 2001, 2002 and it was at the Thirsty Bear Brewing Company. And uh, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna come to the blogger meetup and meet some bloggers. That was cool back in the day, right? And I went to the bar and I'm like, it's full, but I'm not seeing like blogger people. And I went to the hostess and I said, hey, uh, where's the blogger meetup? And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I, have no, I have no idea. I'm like, hmm. Long story short, I end up finding a guy at the end of the bar. I'm like, are you at the blogger meetup? And he's like, yeah. And it turned out to be just me and him that whole night. And at first, I'm like, this fucking sucks. I'm like, I came out to meet 20 people tonight at a blogger meetup, and I met this one guy, and he's talking my ear off. But driving home that night, I realized, you know what? That guy was pretty cool. And I'm glad I came out, because otherwise, I wouldn't have met him. And it made me realize that like, I didn't need 20 people in the room. I just needed that one special guy. So that's my story to you that in fact that there are not 300 people here tonight, but there are enough people that you can actually find somebody that you can create some value for you, and hopefully you did. Anyway, it weighs on me, people. <laughs> I like seeing a full room. Um, but this is, a, this is a cool night. We've, we've got some awesome companies on board um, and some awesome sponsors on board, and you guys are here for the ride. Um, free tacos, do you guys fill up on the free tacos? Yeah. <laughs> I like the free tacos. People are like, why don't you get something else? I'm like, no, free tacos. 
Um, those guys are great. Um, I'm glad they were able to serve you. Um, and uh, as you may have noticed, uh, John, okay, so there's a bar, the big bar in the back. What we try to do is to make sure that people are paying, paying attention and not just yapping in the back. We send John, the bartender, away, but there's a secret. Go to the app, you'll find out. Oh, no, just kidding. Um, there's a bar in the side room, okay? So if you want to grab another drink, go. There's a bar waiting for you. Or, or if you want to have a conversation, head in the side room um, and hang out. Uh, and if you can, tip your bartenders. Um, or if you ever want to have a conversation, go, in the, go outside. But now's the time when we sit down and shut up and pay attention. So let me, let me get the, the commercial part of the night out of the way, and then we'll dive full on into our, into our demos. Um, so this wouldn't happen if it weren't for the people who sponsor us or the companies that sponsor us. Uh, and we're very proud uh, the fact that Twitter and Microsoft and Fathom Law and Double Dutch are investing their time and energy into this community to make sure that we can actually do this. And it's with great honor that we say, yes, we'll take your money. <laughs> um, but no, it's for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for real. I, I, I don't want to make this about the mile show, but uh, you know, I did a lot of thinking you know, over the last couple of weeks. And like, we've been doing this for eight years, you know, once, twice a month, maybe more. And we have events stacked up all through the summer. And, it's kind of my job at this point to blow this fucker up and try, you know, like do something, like set it off in a new direction. You know, I love it and it's everything it needs to be and it, and, and it doesn't have to change, but I almost feel as, as this town is changing around us that we need to evolve as a community. And uh, it's my job, at least at the helm of this thing called SF New Tech, where I find myself, that to bring that out to you guys. So expect, expect some crazy announcements along those lines. One of those, there we go. Let there be light. Can you see me now? Um, I wanna, I wanna say that, uh, that hopefully you guys got the email. If you registered for the event tonight, you got the email saying, hey, download the mobile app. Right, yeah, did you get that? Okay, cool. Download the mobile app, if you didn't already, because through that, there's a, a private back room conversation going on about the event. There's a way for you to comment on the presenters. There's a way to, for you to read up on the presenters. There's a way for you to interact with each other in the room. Um, and that's the direction that we're going. If it were my dream, I would give up on the email and I would send you guys messages through the app, but we're not there yet. But that's kind of one of the directions that we want to go. Um, and that's big thanks to Double Dutch. They're a great local company that provide enterprise versions of mobile apps for events. And Lawrence, the CEO of Double Dutch, I would have to say eight years ago, like he was like one of the, like the third CEOs on our stage. At that point, it was a different company, but like that's one of those San Francisco stories. So thank you to Double Dutch for a mobile app. Go ahead and download it. It's gamified. You get points for everything that you do, and the people that score in the top five uh, score like get the top in the top five point earners tonight um, are going to get uh, bonuses and free tickets and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you're one of the top from, from our last event, I just remembered I promised that to you tonight. I'm like, okay, I'll make good on that. So don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so is, um, is Ryan in the back from Twitter? Ryan? I want to introduce you guys to Ryan Choi from Twitter. And hopefully you guys maybe met in the corner. Um, it's, uh, it's not every day that an that a awesome, uh, youngish San Francisco based public company wants to come out and talk to the underbelly of the tech scene but uh, this is it and uh, Twitter is doing some amazing things and Ryan is helping pull and pull that together and he's looking to connect with folks who want to keep the dream alive and um, you want to plug in Right, thank you, who's that? I love it, thank you. Let's keep energy high, people. Energy high. I've, I've got a fistful of drink tickets. Whoever keeps energy high, I will feed you. I'm not that drunk, not yet. So.
So while Ryan is setting up, I just want to, uh, so this big screen here, so you see, we're going we're gonna to toggle back and forth in, in between two things, one of which is our tweet wall. So anything tagged with the SFNT hashtag on Twitter, and hopefully you guys are tweeting live tonight about what you're seeing, uh, you're encouraged to do so. Anything with the hashtag SFNT could land up on our big tweet wall in the back uh, on the screen. Um, and if you're inside of the SFNT app, um, we're also going to toggle and show some of the activity inside of that. At the end of the night, this is us like adding layers of complexity onto this nonsense, but at the end of the night, we have what we call SFNT Invest. And that's our little tool that we built for you guys to help rate the companies on stage with regard to like, if you were an investor, how much would you give that guy? So anybody that logs into SFNT Invest tonight and you got the email, right? You got the email. If you didn't get the email, sfntinvest.com. Log in. So once you're in the app, you get a million dollars to spend tonight. Okay? That's kind of cool, right? They're like, who had a million dollars to spend on a random Wednesday? So you get a million dollars to spend on the startups you see here tonight. And it's very easy. They're, very, they're slider scale. And at the end of the night, we're going to look and say, who got the biggest investment from the room? And that company is going to go home with not only that prize of going home as like, hey, wow, we're the crowd favorite SF New Tech, but there's a, a, there's a cool tool called Founder Suite, which is run by a friend of mine, Nathan, and they're going to get the keys to Founder Suite, which are tools to help startups get shit done. Um, and maybe more down the line. Um, but invest, use SFNT Invest, use the app, and yeah, okay. Brian. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you so much. So as always, Miles, thank you for having this. Thank you for hosting us and giving us an opportunity to reach out. My name is Ryan. I'm actually part of uh, the developer relations team. So if you have problems with integrating with Twitter, or if you're interested in learning how to integrate with Twitter, feel free to catch me in the back. Uh, happy to talk about all of our products, what you guys can do, and hopefully helping you with distribution or reach or whatever interesting things uh, that you can use Twitter for. We would be, we'd be fortunate to help out with that. Um, I'm not going to take up too much time. We like to talk a little bit about how you can tap into the pulse of the planet with Twitter. I'm going to give a really quick demo because I want to make sure that all the great startups here have a time to, to showcase their stuff. A um, little bit about me, UC Berkeley Computer Science, uh, early engineer at Salesforce. Um, got my MBA for what that's worth. People shun MBAs. I get that. Maybe I do too. And um, uh, started a YC company. Now I'm a developer advocate on behalf of Twitter, one of the best jobs I've had. If you guys are looking to uh, do something a little different, learn a little about marketing, go to market, how to adopt platforms, uh, we are hiring. Feel free to reach me in the back. That's my plug. Um, and, and one of the things that we try to do from the developer relations team is to showcase what awesome looks like with Twitter. Um, I think there's a lot of things about building integrations, helping you get reach, helping you get distribution. Um, and one simple thing that we've kind of done as a hackathon, uh, just to showcase a little bit about what Twitter can do or what Twitter is about, this is on a poor network, but you can actually see that it's doing, a, it's just dropping tweets from one of our public streams um, located around San Francisco, right? And so this may be just 1% of the sample as you kind of expand this out, and we'll see how well this works. These are actual tweets from actual people talking about actual things. And, uh, you know, I had never really conceptualized or visualized this until we built this three days ago. And uh, you just see that, you know, someone had mentioned offhand Twitter is the pulse of the planet. Twitter is like a corpus of thought about what people are actually saying. And when you see something like this, it's, it's actually true. And when you say that this is uh, happening globally, uh, it's actually true. Again, this is not filtered, this is actual tweets happening, and we're removing after every 300 and 400 tweets so this thing does not become insane, although it seems like it might have blocked. Yeah? Um, and, so, and so the thing that we like to say is that there's a ton of Twitter, uh, data on Twitter. Um, taking that with a little bit of sentiment analysis, uh, you can get interesting um, things that maybe people are saying about your brand or about your clients in a way that you can harness even with 1% and uh, make actionable data out of that. Um, 
And certainly, if people are talking about this, they probably are talking about your app, talking about the things, sharing links to your app. And uh, we do some pretty lightweight integrations to help drive downloads to your app. So I hope that's a, a, at least a little bit of a teaser. This was built in two days. We have everything on Twitter dev uh, on GitHub. We're having a lot of open source, so if you have questions about how to integrate or just playing around, if any of you are interested, it's all there, and we're here to help. Uh, and lastly, just to keep it quick simple, um, we're giving away, we're not giving away an Xbox One. You should absolutely go over there, give Lisa and Son the feedback that they want about their Microsoft products. On our side, uh, we're giving away a Raspberry Pi, if you guys know what that is, it's a microcomputer. Um, if you tweet at Twitter Dev and just say, I want a Raspberry Pi, uh, we're gonna be selecting one, maybe not here now, but we'll reach out to you to pick one and uh, get that to you. So thank you again so much. Wanted to keep it quick and lean, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the things that you guys have to show. Thank you, Ryan. Right on, and thank you, Twitter. We love Twitter. Yeah. And tweet about the event. And tweet about the event. Please, please, please. Hashtag SFNT. It's shorter. Really? <laughs> it's short. Yes. Thank you. Right on. Okay, where's Lisa? Come on up. So you guys meet Lisa in the back earlier, maybe. So Lisa flew down from Seattle tonight from the belly of the beasts into the Garden of Eden. And I've got some t-shirts for you guys. And she has some t-shirts. <laughs> SF New Tech with a, with a Golden Gate Bridge on it. It's a collector's item. They're selling on eBay for 50 bucks a pop. <laughs> so Lisa, um, is, uh, is largely responsible for Microsoft's foray into the world of meetups. And it all started here. And it all started here at SF New Tech, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so so the, the, product, uh, the product group uh, at Microsoft, which is IE and Bing and SkyDrive, or OneDrive, um, and am I missing one? And Bing. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, want to connect with you guys in a more intimate way. And so Lisa's going to tell us a little bit more. And this month we're talking a little bit, we're, we're all about IE this month. Um, and here is a browser that you will see again for the first time. Thanks. Um, is there something that we switch off over here to get over? Awesome. Well, hey, everyone. Um, for those I haven't gotten a chance to meet yet, uh, my name is Lisa Abdelova. I'm a product marketing manager for uh, Microsoft's consumer apps and services, like Miles had said. And I'm really excited to be here for a few reasons. Um, so one is that I run our global meetups program, and it all started right here at San Francisco New Tech. Uh, we've been proud sponsors for over a year now. And it's actually something that we um, are you know, our experience here is what we model off in the rest of the cities that we're, you know, going out to reach and, and run these demos on. Um, the second reason is I actually grew up in San Francisco, so it's awesome to be home. Um, love Silicon Valley. Um, and the third is my dad is here. Um, and <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and, and that's a first for me to be able to, you know, uh, sh show, show this, this new, uh, how, what I do now, Dad. <laughs> um, so, uh, but enough about me. I'm here to tell you guys a little bit about what's new with Internet Explorer. Uh, so for the folks that were here a few months back when we first talked about it, um, I'll catch you up. So essentially with IE10, we reimagined what the browser would be like if we built it from the ground up to be perfect for touch. And I'm talking about in a way that's not just touching a browser on a device that's, that can be touched. I'm talking about reimagining the entire experience in a way where you expect touch-first behaviors. So this right here is the new Internet Explorer. Um, and you'll see that we leave the website to be full screen so that you have more room to browse around. Um, you'll see that it's perfect for touch. Um, and it's multi-touch, so I can actually have it running with two hands. Um, 
This is also where the navigation tab is now, so you'll see it's on the bottom and just one swipe away, so it'll get out of your way when you're done with it. Um, but this is what your tabs look like now. Um, and so when we talk about that, you know, IE being fast, fluid, and perfect for touch, um, one of them is that, that this new IE 11 actually empowers you to be able to multitask faster. So I don't know about you guys, um, but I typically have at least, you know, 15 to 30 tabs open at once. Um, and this lets me do that and not lose my mind as I'm like clicking around between all the tabs trying to figure out what it is that I'm looking for. Because this right here lets me see visual thumbnails of what it is that I'm actually you know, going in between. Um, it's also fluid in the sense that these tabs will travel with you across your different devices. Um, so I just had the unfortunate experience where my computer just didn't turn on. Um, and uh, by the nature of my job in my office, I have 10 demo devices that are sitting under my desk. Um, and I was able to actually log in with my Microsoft account, Outlook.com email, um, on each one of those 10 devices and be able to pull up the same tabs that, you know, I have open right here. And now that IE is out on Xbox, those travel there as well, as well as Windows Phone. So, you know, the whole Microsoft ecosystem there. Um, also, we're running an Xbox One sweepstakes. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to enter in to win yet, we've got surveys in the back, and we're going to do a drawing in a little bit um, so that one of our survey respondents will walk home uh, with an Xbox One tonight. Um, and for the rest of you guys, you guys are helping us make our products better, um, which hopefully is something that um, the developers in the room um, here are uh, excited about, um, as, as well as the users, of course. Um, one of the main things that we're thinking about with Internet Explorer um, is essentially rethinking what the web can be. I, I, I talked a little bit earlier about um, the concept of, you know, touch-first experiences, but let's think about it a little bit deeper in terms of what this would mean for actual websites. So this right here is something that we built out that shows off the new uh, 3D capabilities that you're able to run in Internet Explorer. Um, so I'm able to go explore not only outside of this fish tank, but even within it and move it around. And I can even add a bunch of other fish in there and it won't affect um, the processing within it. You're also able to do cool things like explore new experiences, also full screen on this, on this web. Here's a video of Mount Everest. You're able to explore it in IE now and actually stop, look around, see these epic visuals. Um, and that, that's just you know, some of the pieces. Because um, essentially, we want to be able to give you the experience of you know, swiping up and down things uh, in your browser and bring it to something that's not just on your phones um, or on your tablets, but something that's on your laptops as well. Um, one of the things that you guys might have noticed in your browser experiences um, is uh, potential compatibility issues, which um, can I see a raise of hands for the developers in the room? Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Wow. Less than less than typical. I, I guess usually we see about uh, about uh, fifty percent breakdowns. But um, hopefully people in the room aren't um, surprised to see that Internet Explorer. You know, whatever you may think or not think, um, is one of the top two browsers out in the market, um, and uh, we are committed to building innovative experiences that will you know, keep our users happy and engaged, um, but also help them rethink what the web can be. And on that end, we also help the developers, so the folks that you know, had their hands up in the air, um, make it easier for them to build websites for us. So we have something called Modern.ie, which allows developers to plug in their code, um, plug in their sites, and run diagnostics on them on ways that um, it'll flag potential challenges in there. Oh, okay. Can you guys hear me better now? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, so this is a tool which uh, essentially helps developers code easier. We also have status.modern.ie, which shows our um, continued commitment to web standards and the progress that we're um, 
that we're having there. So you'll see anything that you guys are, you know, thinking about incorporating into your websites, you can go check out status.modern.ie to see um, where we're at with it for Internet Explorer. Um, but essentially what we'd like to do is to bring more experiences like, you know, gaming here where you can take advantage of multi-touch and bring experiences that were never in the browser before but now can be to everyone around so that everyone can do stuff like this in a browser that's fast, uh, fluid, and perfect for touch. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Very nice. Thank you, Lisa. I've always wanted to do that globe thing in my browser. This is awesome. Can I touch it? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. I can do this all day. <laughs> and it's an Internet Explorer. It's an Internet Explorer. Who knew? Right on. Thank you. Thank you again to Microsoft. OK. Um, if you didn't notice, we have a lot of cameras here tonight. Um, this is uh, largely thanks to Jimmy G over here from Q There Media and KSVN TV. Um, I realized that his logo didn't make it on the poster because it wasn't communicated to our poster maker, but that's okay. Um, so Jimmy G is streaming the event live tonight. Um, so if you want to invite people into the room to join us, you can do that. They just have to visit sfnewtech.com right now and we're streaming it on the website right now. So if there are folks that you want to invite in, let them know, tweet it out, um, and use the hashtag SFNT. Okay, and big thanks to Fathom Law, Eric Ferraro. And that's it for the ads. What do you say we get into some demos? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> first demo is Flexi. Uh, Ayanis, where are you, my friend? Back here? Okay, cool. So. What's cool about Flexi, we've been doing this so long that we actually had these guys up on stage before they even launched. And this was a couple of years ago. It was their first public showing of their product ever. It was right here on this stage. And since then, they've raised a couple of million dollars. They've got a couple of more users. And they've got uh, a new win, uh, which is a Guinness Book of World Record uh, title for the fastest keyboard on Earth. Yeah, right here. Who knew, man? Look, look what you got. Oh, that's great. No, but um, I'm really proud of these guys. This, uh, the application for Flexi uh, sees no bounds. And uh, as soon as you're ready. Testing. Deleted testing. Ooh. Ready to roll? We have the timer? I'll do the timer. Don't worry about that. You want this one? Or you want this one? Eh. Okay, let's do it. Thanks, everyone. Um, so uh, just uh, before I start, quick show of hands. How many of you know Flexi already or have heard of it? Not bad. Okay, uh, so thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a, uh, an anniversary pitch for us, really. We, we were here two years ago, uh, and uh, it, we were here the, the first time we ever showed Flexi to anyone other than the people in the garage, basically, uh, was in SF New Tech. So, uh, we want to show you what we've done and, uh, and uh, uh, see what you think. So for those who haven't seen Flexi and don't know what it is, Flexi is a next generation smart keyboard uh, application and technology that makes typing so much easier on smart devices that you could even type a whole email or message on your phone without even looking at it. And to prove the point, uh, we've got a, a neat demo. Wow. It worked. Okay, uh, we've got a neat demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type a sentence here uh, without looking at my phone and make sure I don't cheat. I'm going to look way up there. Delete it. Delete it. Oh, no more text to delete. Introducing a revolutionary keyboard. So. As, as you can see, while I'm typing, I'm making a hell of a lot of mistakes because I'm, I'm not even looking at my phone. Technology. But, uh, but it's smart enough to know what I meant to type when I, uh, when I hit space. Uh, so basically, we're, we're trying to eliminate the problem of fat fingers. Uh, we're trying to eliminate, you know that email signature you have at the bottom of your emails that says, that says you know, sorry, I sent that on mobile. We're trying to eliminate that. And even if you've got a, a broken arm as I do right now, it should be fine. 
Um, so, so that's by, by way of a brief demo. And uh, so, so why we started this company? We started a few years ago and we started because typing on, on smart devices sucks. Nobody, nobody likes it. Nobody likes typing on a desktop computer, let alone a mobile device. And uh, on mobile devices, it's even worse. Uh, and uh, the main reason why you switch from a tablet back to, uh, back to your laptop is in fact the keyboard. The, the guys over at Microsoft know that very well. They've made a very good attachment that uh, solves this problem with hardware. But we want to do away with the hardware eventually. Uh, and we also wanted to make a, an application that would work not just for today's uh, class of, you know, types of devices, but also for, for what's coming in the future. Um, so we were here two years ago. The app hadn't even launched. Uh, first thing we did, first, up, first market we launched that was actually the blind market. Uh, not many people know, but uh, blind people use iPhones by and large. And the blind community was the first community to discover Flexi and use it way before anybody else knew about it. Uh, and we have hundreds of thousands of blind users using Flexi today uh, to type every day as fast as you and I type. And uh, that demo I always do, which I type something without looking, is actually on the app that we have for, for the blind audience. Um, we've won a lot of awards and, and recognition over, over time. Um, we closed our first venture funding last summer in uh, uh, early August of 2013. Uh, and really, where we are now is the last few months, uh, we've launched our app on Android and iOS uh, uh, for you guys to, to replace your system keyboard with. So uh, if, you, if you haven't, then you should uh, give it a try. It's called Flexi. Uh, what we're doing very soon, we've announced it already, is uh, we are uh, going to provide an app for the current generation of uh, Samsung Gear smartwatches uh, that allows you to type uh, SMS messages right on your wrist. And with a technology like this, you should be able to type as easily on a watch as you do on a phone or a tablet. Um, wow, time flies. Okay, two more, uh, two more demos of things we've done. One is, um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we announced that we broke the Guinness World Record for the fastest typed SMS message. There is actually such a thing. Um, and I've got a little video. Flexi is the easiest, most comfortable, most accurate touchscreen typing experience in the world. In fact, it is so accurate that you can even type without looking. It's also the fastest. Congratulations, it's a new Guinness World Records title. Thank you. the fastest keyboard in the world. That's one of our users. Uh, he's insanely fast, uh, regardless of, of Flexi almost, but, uh, but we, uh, we broke the fastest, uh, uh, the fastest uh, record. And, yep. uh, and with just 30 seconds to go, just to show you some of the other applications we're building for the future, I don't know if any of you have a PlayStation or, or Xbox and you try to type on these consoles, and it's always a pain. So this is with uh, the PlayStation controller. So basically, you can turn any surface into a typing uh, surface, even the little touchpad that is on the controller, and you can turn it into a keyboard. And uh, I think I've run out of time, but uh, while we're here, always we need to hire uh, awesome developers and, and marketing people, so. Right on, Ionis, thank you. <laughs> Good start, good start to the night. I like it. So now's the time for you guys to raise your hands high, we'll do some questions. Time to put Ionis on the spot. Sir, Chris. Yeah. Charles, uh, I'm really impressed by the, the product. Um, I'm French, and I would like to uh, test that in French. Uh, do you provide that, like foreign languages, or just uh, in English right at the moment? Yeah, 16, uh, 16 languages, including French, uh, besides English. And, okay. uh, and we we're adding every week. That's one of the things we're actually working really hard on right now. Okay, great. 
Good job. But uh, you should test it in French. I'd like to hear. I would like to get more better. <laughs> yeah, it would be great. I'm going to download the app. If you go to, if you have Android and you go to beta.flexi.com, uh, would love to hear feedback also. Yeah. Good job. Hands up high. Usually when I'm in this side of the room, somebody over there has their hand up. Go ahead. Or vice versa. You guys, this is like, this is seriously, this is interactive part of the night. I can ask you a ton of questions, but I don't think you want to hear my questions. Jesse. Right here. You mentioned that you are um, incorporating with SMS on uh, the wearable devices. Are you looking to integrate with any other wearable technologies? Absolutely. So we're, we're heavily focused on wearable technology. I am passionate about the, the space. Uh, and we are passionate about the space. Uh, we have a technology that works really, really well, especially on small screens and, uh, and different form factors than today's phones. So for sure interested to, to explore partnerships in. Uh, and so how would somebody get in touch with you if they were I'm here. interested in exploring? OK. At the back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. You see the high touch that we provide here for you guys? That's awesome. <laughs> Hands up high. Yes. Adolfo, you're next. Um, that, I did, that just seemed really cool, and I just had um, something that just came to my mind. Um, when, what about pressure sensitivity? And I just thought it would be kind of cool if it could actually pick up your mood or something, you know, to deal with. To, to the extent that the hardware can give us these yeah. things, we can use them. Uh, a lot of hardware these days doesn't, but uh, one of the demos that I don't have here, but you'll find it on the web, is we've done an integration with Leap Motion, which allows you to actually type on air. Um, it's, it's in 3D, so uh, you know you can you can add to the experience where you have hardware that gives you more input than just where the user presses. Right. Um, so you know we don't use the sensitivity right now on when I demo on the iPhone because that that is not an API that's given to us, but um, certainly could be integrated. Cool. Thanks. I was just curious. And by the way, on the wearables, if you I, I have a watch, if you want to see a demo afterwards. So I find myself using it and then kind of abandoning it for a while and then kind of playing around with it a little bit. And uh, I was wondering, are you guys going to add any sort of like more training kind of stuff like YouTube videos or, or tutorials or things like that? Because, I mean, you know, you can hide the special characters and the space bar can go away and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so the kind of user we're getting is changing over time. Um, the experience. Uh, would have been tailored for the early adopter kind of crowd early on in the process. Uh, and as we're expanding now, we are ma A, making it easier and reducing the learning curve, and B, improving on the onboarding experience and the way that people can discover new features. Uh, so, so our vision is that you shouldn't have to ship this with an instruction manual. You, you know, nobody needs an instruction manual to type. It should be zero learning curve. But we should also uh, give people who invest in it, invest time in it, um, something back. So if you do use Flexi a lot, you will find that you will become much, much faster than whatever else you were using over time. Forgive me if you already covered this. I was in the sidebar getting a drink. Um, what's your business model? S say again, sorry? Your business model. How are you making money? We, uh, number of ways. Uh, the app that we have on, on Android is a freemium app. You try it for 30 days, and if you like it, you buy it. And hopefully, you, actually, it's on sale today, so you can do that. Uh, we work with hardware uh, and software vendors to integrate our technology uh, into their uh, devices and into their uh, applications and software. We have an SDK. So uh, these are the main ways. So I, th I don't want to mean to put you on the spot, especially since we're out of time. But in the two years since you've been here and now we're like in business, can you talk a little bit about your traction and your paying customers and what that looks like? Uh, we announced about a month ago that we've crossed uh, a million downloads cross-platform. Uh, so. Uh, really happy with that, and you know, I, quick show of hands in the room shows that more and more people know about us. Uh, I still think we're a newcomer in the space, and awesome, we have some uh, older companies, bigger companies in the room, uh, SwiftKey. Uh, but uh, but you know, we, we, I, th I hope that we can continue that growth that we've had for the next two years. Also. So wait, your competition is here to see you tonight? Yeah. Ah. I have some uh, cool flexi teasers for you. If you yeah. <laughs> There's going to be an alley fight later on. That's 9 o'clock. No, no. We've got we like taco it. tickets. We, we have the same passion. So. <laughs> right on. Flexi, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we're gonna just do a little admin here, get these guys in the spotlight. I think maybe move it up just like it's six inches too might help out. Yeah. Um, we're trying to make this good for the camera. How's that look, Jimmy? Good. Okay, uh, next up is uh, Joseph Sanchez. He's the CEO of Q Technologies. Those who aren't from London, what does Q mean? It's a line. Good. This is actually more than a line. It's a smart line. Joe, smile for crying out loud, dude. So, uh, ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. He's ready to roll. Q Technologies. All right. Uh, thank you, Miles. Uh, my name is Joe Sanchez, founder of Q Technologies. All right, so I'm sure you guys are all queued up for this presentation right now. Um, how many of you here have waited in line, online, to buy something that you really wanted? I definitely have. And as you know, today the line has moved online, right? And what we're seeing is people are buying things, not now, e-commerce has gone from now to next. I want the hottest thing that's not available right now because we can get anything right now, okay? And so consumers today are com committing their demand pre-product realization as we see exploding at crowdfunding, but also pre-retail availability that we see in record numbers of pre-orders and everything from hot consumer electronics, fashion, cars, entertainment, and even internet of things like smart light bulbs, 350,000 pre-orders. This is called pre-tail and it's becoming mainstream, okay? Uh, However, but pre-tail sucks if you're a fan, right? You're buying something, and unlike physical lines, you're left in the dark, you're all alone, and you have no idea when you're gonna get your product. And for brands, brands have no idea to even anticipate or measure their demand. Our friends Microsoft back there over-anticipated demand for their Surface, and they had to take a $900 million write-off, $900 million, okay? But on the other hand, brands, you know, Underplanned, like Sony and their, their PlayStation's out of stock to the summer, leaving fans frustrated with that delay. What if there's a way that you can actually take control of your position, have fun in that process, and move ahead in line by doing things to support the brand and the ultimate win-win for both the brand and the consumer? That's what we're talking about. And today, you guys are gonna get an exclusive preview of the smart line. Essentially, what we've done is evolved the concept of a line for the digital age. Now you can jump ahead in line by sharing, referring, and engaging. This makes waiting so much more fun, exciting, and rewarding. All right. All right, so here you're gonna see what's uh, the first virtual dynamic queuing system for e-commerce. You guys ready to jump in line? All right, uh, here is the smart line. Uh, this is one of our uh, initial pilots, sprayable energy, it was the first sprayable energy shot. And, and please tell me that thing broke, or I'm going, okay. <laughs> um, and here you can see what the top pre-order customers have to say and, and, and who they are. And this is something that could be embedded on the, on the website for the product launch. Now, I'm excited, I'm ready to go and make a pre-order purchase for Sprayable, and I'm gonna do that by buying it here. This is actually hosted on our site, and we connect with a, uh, a number of different e-commerce platforms. Once I make my pre-order purchase, I am entered into the smart line. And here, and this is what it would look like, da -da -da. I can see how many people are ahead of me in line. And you probably recognize something like this from, from mailbox or those type of experiences, but that was a static queue. This is a dynamic queue. So now I see you know, what my position in line is. I can see who else is with me in line, those ahead and behind me, and down here are different rewards. If I can get into a top position, I can earn one of these rewards and get great perks, status, and even the bragging rights to be the very first person to get sprayable energy. And I can do that by performing the activities over here on the right. For example, if I want to express my excitement on Facebook to my friends about sprayable energy, 
I could do that by performing this activity. And I earn points. The more points I get, the further up the line I move. And it looks like I'm not going to... I can also follow on Twitter. I could post on, share on Facebook, like on Facebook. Let's see if I can do that. Here I just got points, and I've just moved up the line. Now, uh, we can also add a pre-testimonial to express my excitement. This is great organic customer content for SEO. Uh, of course, if I can get someone else to follow me online by making a purchase, then I'm going to get the most points for that. Now, these are activities I would normally do as a fan to express my excitement for a product I'm really passionate about, but now I finally am rewarded and I'm recognized for doing them. And as you can see, I moved further up the line, but I'm going to need to keep coming back into the queue throughout the pre-launch in order to stay ahead. And this is what makes SmartLine so highly engaging. We're seeing anywhere from 50 to 70x what the industry average is for post-purchase engagement. Now, as a brand manager, I'll go ahead and I'll set up my campaign in the management consult, and it's super easy. Uh, just update, I can select activities, create rewards, connect to the e-commerce platform, boom, and I'm ready to go. We also allow a bunch of management. So if, you just, if you're a hardware company just came off Kickstarter, you can upload your, your backer list to see the queue. You can also assign them extra points. You could invite a wait list if you had. You can also give them extra points for their early support. Uh, we have full email, ma email management, campaign re reports, and so forth. And then we also have provide a great dashboard here where you could see how many, yeah, how active your queue is, you know, the number of referrals, and it looks like a lot of them converted into, changed into conversions. I can also see my uh, social reach, and it looks like my brand has got, in this example, has gone pretty, generated a lot of social reach. And we track all the different activities, and we have a whole bunch more that we're working on and to come out with in the future. But uh, Q for the sense is, is now for the first time your fans can become your powerful marketing channel to help you launch your product as well as drive your brand promotion while optimizing demand. And so the smart line revolution is here. The wait for change is over. So thank you very much. Right on. Thank you, Joe. Um, I'm going to ask you a first question. So can you talk about some of your customers and who's having some good successes now? Uh, okay, yeah, so we, we've been piloting this, and we've just kind of come out to talk about this publicly in the last few weeks, starting at Demo Enterprise a few weeks ago. But you're going to start seeing our smart line involved with a lot of very big product launches throughout the course of the summer. So we're at a different stage than the company saw previously. We're just getting to market right now. Right on. Hands up high, folks. You know the drill. Don't make me. Yes, Kate. Hey, thanks. Hi, my name is Kate. I have a question about the way that you share and your demographic that you're pointing at. So if you're 25, you're more likely to share maybe on Facebook. What if you're 35 or to 40 and you don't necessarily want to tweet about it? Is that something that you guys think about? Yeah, a great question. Uh, it turns out when, when people have done analysis of social networks, uh, for example, and they found the thing that people share the most relating to commerce, it tends not to be the coupon that someone got or the, the new vacuum they bought. It tends to always, mo on a vast majority, super majority of the time, it's a hot product that they're really excited about, that they want to share to their friends, that has not come out yet. All right? And so these are things that these people are normally doing to get the word out, to express their excitement. Uh, early adopters tend to appreciate firstism as the number one incentive. Next is, is perks and then recognition, and then discounts or stuff is way, way, way down. And so we've optimized the platform for early adopters to 15% of the population that is engaged in this. These are the, the tip of the spear, as you will, in the demand funnel. And that's what we've built here, a very powerful uh, funnel for them. Yes. Hello, my name is Gabriel. So a quick question. If you're trying to tailor a message how do you monetize the things you're trying to sell? So let's say, for example, I'm a restaurant, and 
If you give me 100 tweets, I'll give you $5. If you give me 10 of your friends to like me on Facebook, I'll give you $20. How do you do that in the back end? Well, that, that our, our, our platform here is really to drive sales, pre-sales specifically. So we don't really quite have a restaurant use case right now. And if we did, it would probably be buying you know, a reservation in advance and order. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's how you get your ticket to get into the queues. You have to buy something, right? So I'm either buying a, a PlayStation 4, pre-selling that, and then I'll get into the queue after that. And so all, this, all the activities are actually selected by the brand of things they want to optimize. And they can fully customize the, in the weights of the different types of points that are related to that. We're, uh, we're also going to be coming out with surveys soon. Uh, brands have a hard time getting their best fans to fill out surveys, but not with Q. Yes. Hi, my name is, is uh, Dave. How do fulfillment centers actually stay linked up to the point that they can deliver the product when the queue is constantly changing? Yeah, great question. So, so the biggest challenge right now is, is all brands, because the man because retailers understand that they need to be demand-driven in order to succeed right now, uh, you know, they're having to manage the market dynamics of that, right? And so part of that, there's always been a trade-off between supply and demand. If I have too much demand, I don't want to you know, keep selling because I don't know how to manage that, um, and then and conversely. So what, what we're able to do for the very first time now is, is offer a way that brands can prioritize their customers in a way that's fair and efficient and democratic. Okay? Think about lines only had the attribute of, of chronological order. Recently, money, I pay more. But what we've done is crack that open, right? We've created you know, virtually a number of possibilities that you can incentivize people to jump over things, right? And advance themselves. And the way that, and that works great into segmentation of, of order delivery. And, and really where we're going with the company is really uh, building a uh, demand chain management technologies company. Okay, if you think about the, the world of manufacturing was all about, you know, the system behind that was supply chain management when it was supply driven. Now that things become demand driven, we need to manage demand. And so for great examples, we have a company that has 75,000 uh, pre-registration, okay, for a $1,500 product that we're going to be launching. Uh, they only have 5,000 spots for their first shipment. And so they need a way to, how, how do they determine who gets those spots? That's fair and democratic. So they're going to use our system, and gonna, those people are going to self-select themselves into those top 5,000 spots. And once that locks, we're going to remove those, and, we, and our, we're working with our e-commerce platforms in the very first priority fulfillment. This has never been done before. It's very unique customization we're doing. That's going to send, we're going to dynamically alter those positions based off the queue position, send it to the e-commerce platform, which will then, you know, for the fulfillment, pull them out of the queue, and then it'll keep going for the next batch. And we can do the segmentation. Uh, we have another customer that says, okay, October is 5,000 units. Uh, those are the top positions. The next uh, 20,000 will be shipped in, in November. And so they can keep competing. And so you can keep selling while at the same time managing your fulfillment and, and order delivery. And that, that's where we're going is in, with this, yeah. Hi, uh, with regards to your scoring system, do I get more points if I have more followers on Twitter or Facebook, or is it all the same? Uh, yeah, so that doesn't matter. Uh, like, you know, the reason why clout never did very well is because influence doesn't really matter. It's how I use that influence that matters, right? So my real system is based off performance, right? I can have a lot of fans, but if I don't really incentivize them to do anything, it doesn't matter. So it's all driven by how many, you know, if I, for one end, as a user, I'm, I'm incentivized to go in every, every day to actually share, and you get some points for that. Uh, however, if I get, if I get uh, more people to interact with that share, therefore the quality of it's better because people are liking it or reposting it or adding comments, then, then you get more points for that. And obviously we want to drive towards sales or, or uh, content or data collection through surveys and things like that. So. Uh, it's totally, you know, customizable by the brand, but the, the goal here, I mean, I came from the finance world and I want to revolutionize digital marketing and apply a lot of the, the, the metrics of, 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 uh, of results-driven uh, methodology to, to digital marketing, and that's what we're trying to do. Data, man. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we're officially out of time. That right. was Q Technologies. Nice stuff. Jim. Thank you. Good stuff, dude. Thank you. So, Dimitri, I see you in the wings. Yeah.
let's, let's plug you in. So you may notice over the next couple of demos, you might hear a foreign accent that sounds to be... Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, uh, these guys are from Palo Alto. <laughs> Not yet. They're working on it. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's a little French influence tonight. If in, uh, there's a lot of great stuff coming out of uh, France, and we might see some tonight, maybe, maybe not. Ready to go? So yeah. this, this is uh, Dimitri Paré? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and he's with Vade Retro. Exactly. Ready to roll? Yeah. So I'm Dimitri Paré from Vade Retro, and I'm really glad to be here to present you the next gen email fin filtering. So let me, ex let me explain. So our mission is to keep the email safe and convenient, whatever the level of the end user. So our job is to filter the email. But why? Everybody has an email address, and everybody suffers of the same issue. We all receive too much low priorities email. They can be ads, social network notification, or newsletter. But this is not spam, this is gray mail. It represents up to 75% of the stream, of the clean stream, after a good spam filtering. So this confused situation makes a rate of 82% of unsatisfied customers, according to Gartner. But don't, don't worry, we have a solution. Thanks to our technology called the heuristic filter, I'm here to present two main features, which are the gray mail auto classification and the safe unsubscribe. So let me show you in a live demo. Great. All right. So we, we, we discover that uh, most of corporations we're working with prefer to send a report to end user instead of real-time receiving for gray mail. So here is a report we receive, the end user will receive for corporation. So you cannot read what is written, but that's sad. <laughs> so this is, on, on the top, this is gray mail, all the gray mail, all the low priority email you receive, and down it's spam. So directly here, you can do three actions. Two, you can release the email, so it will go in your primary inbox. You can add to whitelist, or directly unsubscribe from a newsletter or an email you don't want anymore. So let me show you how to unsubscribe in a one click. You just click on this one if you want. It opens your browser, you can see the email, and then, ta -da, up, 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 you say, okay, that's done. You are unsubscribed from this email, which is called NBC Philadelphia, blah, blah, blah. So, you can also manage all of this on a web, web interface, I will show you. So again, here is all the email we, we saw before, and on the left, all the spam. So I don't have a lot of spam. So as you can see, the green, the green check was uh, the mail I unsubscribed for, and on the web interface, you can unsubscribe from many mails in one click. Let me show you. Okay. It's running a little. So the two, two are unsubscribed, and one is still in process. Oh. So uh, the, 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 technology, the technology is really smart and won't, won't let you unsubscribe from a spam, because we, we, we won't let you communi communicate with a spammer because of security. Go back to gray mail. So you, we can also release an email. And as you can see on the logo, this is social emails. So the engine recognizes social email from other newsletter or whatever. So I can also release an email to send it directly in my inbox in a one click. 
said OK. And I hope I will have a notification down here from my Outlook. So um, the engine is also able to, to, to differentiate uh, commercial email, marketing email, from transactional email. So the mail from United Airlines you receive with your flight reservation will go in your primary inbox instead of going in the gray mail. 10 seconds left. So 84% is the rate of users who are very satisfied. I said very satisfied. And 50% decrease complaint we, we observe by, an, by SFR, which is a leading telco operator in Europe. And thanks very much. Well done. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Ellen. Hi. Is this, what's the relationship uh, to, to Exchange? Is this its own email server? Is it a client? Is it a plugin? It works whatever the, the server. It can work on Exchange. And it's before Exchange. So it will filter email before Exchange. All right, who's got the hardest question in the room? Cristiano. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cristiano. Uh, what if, uh, if I use uh, Gmail as a client? Uh, how uh, I can uh, plug in something, uh, or I don't know exactly. Gmail as a personal account, or as a Google Apps for, for both as a personal account and uh, if I am a startup, uh, uh, for example, for a business account? So, um, I want to say if you use Google Apps, you don't really need the Gray classification, but it will be complicated to integrate and will, will mean um, uh, different people to answer. I will answer to your question. Uh, for Gmail, we have uh, a lot of uh, corporate uh, customers who are using Vaderetro in a cloud service, which is called Vaderetro Cloud. And uh, in this case, you have, uh, you have uh, just the MX record to change, and uh, Vaderetro will be positioned uh, before Gmail. Okay, so uh, if I can uh, continue with the question. So you are saying that uh, I, I have to change my MX uh, records on the DNS, is it right? Correct, yes. Okay, so, the so this is uh, for the, the business account, but uh, if, uh, if I have just a plain uh, Gmail account as a personal user? We have also a solution for that because you are speaking about residential customers and we have a very specific uh, free apps which is called Love Your Emails. And uh, I invite you all to check on your uh, Android or iPhone or just in the web to Love Your Emails with s, loveyouremails.com. And there is, this, is, this is a web uh, application, I mean, sorry, IMAP service, who will classify all your email accounts as Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, uh, mail.ru, whatever you want. Okay, thank you. Thank you to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's mine. Feeling. Go ask a question. <laughs> okay, one more, one minute and 38 seconds on the clock for another question. So I'll, I'll raise a question. So, so as you as you immerse yourself in Silicon Valley, you realize the challenges in front of you in this space. What are your deepest and darkest nightmares in this, and like what you need to do tomorrow? 
Uh, I want to say what we need to do tomorrow. Did you see the web interface? Maybe make it a little bit more friendly? Okay, so UI, UX. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, we, we were more focused on the engine, on the technology aspect, and we have to do one more step on the UI right now. And, okay. it's it, and it is what we are doing right now. That's good. Yeah. So are you, let me ask you are, you, are you doing UI, UX development here? Uh, or elsewhere? I, I won't say we follow, uh, we follow trend which appear here, but we still developing in, in France for the moment, and we, we just coming in, in United States. So, uh, and we'll maybe uh, plan to, to do some development in the uh, United States. Yeah. Let me ask a more pointed question. So go I just want to see a bead of sweat go down your board. That's all. Um, is, is, would you find that your UI and UX needs can be more better fulfilled in the Valley? That you don't have designers and web developers in Paris or wherever that can do the same job for me? I think whatever, whenever, wherever you are, you can do nice UI. But here you are in the middle of trends, and you really, you really discover first and quickly new trends. So that's why it's going to help us to to be here for the UI aspect. Good answer. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. And okay. No, we're out of time, um, and I can go on on that stuff, but good stuff. Made Retro, Dimitri. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was just going to briefly say, like, most companies come from abroad to tap into engineering talent, right, here in the Valley, um, or to do biz dev, to connect with different partners. Not often you hear about companies looking to, do the, to, to, to connect into UI and UX resources here that you would think would be more broadly available elsewhere. Just my thought. But it's good, that just goes to show you guys are in the right spot. So come back and sit down. No, just kidding. Okay, Charles is here. Yeah. I'm here. And Charles is with Trade Labs. You're right. And uh, he's a little nervous tonight, so we're gonna let yeah, him go. Really bad bit. tonight, really he nervous, you know, I have to speak English, wow, it's difficult for me. Because I'm French and I'm also very bad tonight, you know what? Because I don't have any demo to do it for you. Uh, because I will mostly work with algorithms and it's very difficult to have a demo of algorithms. But I will try to do a, a good story and I hope you're going to enjoy it. That's good. And listen, if you want to open up like a terminal window in code for these guys, they would, they would love you. I have to call my CDO and my team behind that. They are pretty far away, but let's I can do that. Why let's, not? Let's here. <laughs> okay, Charles from Trade Lab. Yeah. Um, so let's tell a story, and it's a true story. Uh, this morning I woke up and I went to, uh, on the internet and I read a really interesting article about advertising. You know what? Um, like a few days ago in, uh, in the UK, and it's Financial Times, we're saying that Rocket Fuel, a big, uh, big company in advertising, served about like 50% ads on robot, not human being, non user, just robot. And that's a big, big problem. So when we talk about that, maybe uh, we can say that there is a big problem right at the moment on advertising, and maybe it's 10 years of opposition, you know? Uh, I mean, by that, you have like branding system, you know? You know what is branding? You have a lot of brands, they invest a lot. Billions of dollars every year investing on branding. But usually, it's very expensive, and it's very long to set up a campaign. It's long, it's annoying, you need a lot of people, a lot of time. And after that, sometimes it's not performing so well. And on the other end, you have those same brands investing again billions of dollars on what? return on investment. They try to do uh, affiliate platform, they use a networks, usually what they use, black box. A big black box without any transparency, any visibility, and usually you have problems. And the main problem is maybe what you're seeing here. You have like Toyota, Toyota is my client for almost six months now, and if he sees that, that's a problem. It's a peer-to-peer -peer website, 
and it's not a good website. So usually you have like 50% of the advertisers, they are not seen by the user, and sometimes it's so worse than that, it's on a crap website. So usually, branding and return on investment, there is no answer. It's a big, wow, point d'interrogation, as we say in France. So what do we try to do? It's mixing the both. So we built a platform, so algorithm, trying to uh, give the, well, to address the right ad to the right person, on the right time, on the right website, and with the right creative and the right message. It's pretty new, but uh, it works. I mean, like, we are a French company. We built the company three years ago. We're going to do like 20 million this year. We work with, with uh, a lot of international top brands. We are the first buyer uh, in Europe in terms of real-time bidding. So, I mean, our platform pretty works. So what do we provide? We provide a full transparency and a full visibility, you know, for the brand. So you have the control. The brands have the control with our platform uh, over the brand experience. What we provide also is a pretty interesting tool in terms of visibility and durability. Uh, it's a scoring, just a little uh, show. We score the, the placement. We have placement ID on the, on, on the, on the web. So we score the, those placements ID with the surface and the duration of the banner seen by uh, the user. And we have the good score. We bid a lot to that. Of course, we work also on the audience. The best is find and reach the right audience. So we have a lot of data. We, uh, of course, uh, put a lot of cookie on the website and try to reach the audience, know the audience, and after that, uh, like clone the audience. Uh, we call it uh, uh, data, <laughs> data look-alike. Um, we, full, well, we provide also a full transparency dashboard, uh, so all the advertisers can have a full transparency on the domains, on the data, on the URLs, and on the margin what we're doing. It's really interesting for them, so you look at the reports, just like simple reports, we have that more uh, for them. Uh, and what's the main difference? We really focus on a prospection side, we really focus on a premium um, environment, um, with um, like a, a prospecting approach, um, we really love you know the creative. We follow the user with different creatives, trying to serve first rich media, and after that, like following uh, impacting uh, uh, creative. So really believe on that, and all the algorithm you know are totally um, totally adaptable and very flexible. And we strongly believe that we uh, we need a a man plus machine approach. I mean, like, the Ferrari is maybe the algorithm, and of course you need drivers and mechanicians, and of course the data scientists and the traders are here to drive the car and to win the race. It's a mix of that. Algorithm, data, and man, human being really strongly focus on that. And when I'm here, it's of course opening an office in the US because it's a very challenging country, and I love that, having challenges. Thank you very much. Right on, Charles. Thank you. Let's talk fast. about those challenges. Okay, raise your hands high. Un, deux, trois. <laughs> so, can you clarify exactly how you're accessing publisher inventory? Is it through the exchanges like AdX and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, so uh, we use the DSP. Uh, AdNexus is our main partner in, uh, in Europe, and we are well, we have built all the technology on, on AppNexus, so we built uh, the tracking system, the tag management system, the algorithm, and the bidder system uh, on AppNexus. Um, so we are connected to all the ad exchanges of data providers uh, that you can imagine. So our main, uh, our main partners are Microsoft, and Yahoo, uh, or Facebook, or Google. We buy everywhere, and we just try to know who is behind the screen. Is it a girl or a man? With his age, work, uh, what his behavior is interesting on, you know, like tennis or jogging or whatever you want, you know. So on each impression, we analyze about like 60 data, and we serve about like three billion impression a month in uh, in France right at the moment. So we analyze a lot of data and trying to, of course, higher the bid when the score of the user and the website and the cross of this score is very high. 
what we're doing right at the moment, you know. Charles, how, how long are you here for? And is your whole team here or just a couple of people or? Not just me uh, right at the moment. My partner is going to be here uh, like in a couple of days. And we want to open an office in New York and of course here uh, for the innovation. Um, but it will be more in New York soon because it's more the media. So we are about like 45 people uh, in France. We're going to be like 60 to 70 at the end of the year. Wow. We open, you know, Italy and Turkey. So I mean, like, you know, it's um, it's growing a, a lot. And of course, I know it's really challenging here, but it's so also very exciting. So I need a team. I just need a big team, you know, to uh, of course improve the the algorithm, having sales guys, operational guys, data scientists, and like uh, product managers trying to uh, to be better, you know? <laughs> That's good. I hope so. Hands up. Yes, sir. Uh, how is your business affected by the trend towards regulatory um, issues around privacy and data retention and, you know, users not wanting to be tracked? Can you just repeat that slower, please? Uh, um, how is your business affected by users who don't want to be tracked, as well as by uh, regulators and governments who want to go uh, pass laws around uh, data privacy and tracking? Yeah. Um, we really focus right at the moment, of course, on the user and, and the website. But what we really like is uh, the pillars of um, the advertising, like it's the creative and the coverage and the repetition. So we try to do a, a mix of that. So really, uh, I mean, like we work with really uh, big brands. What they need, you know, it's usually, of course, covering their, well, just their, the, the audience, you know. But what they like, uh, it's more a, a premium environment. So really try to uh, serve a, a video first. And we are uh, the ability to, uh, you know, transform the, the ad very fast. I mean, we can have a video and we can transform five another expandable video and after that an in banner video. So we try to follow the user with different creatives in the funnel. Uh, and of course, uh, trying to uh, make him convert, you know, for the brand. But usually, yeah, we really focus on the user, but with a very creative and premium approach. Because we work mostly for L'Oreal, uh, Toyota, I mean like automotive companies, like big distribution companies, or f banks, insurances. So they need like really uh, branding, and of course they need also performance, so trying to do both, and it's complicated to do that, of course. But uh, yeah, it's the main approach, that's the main difference. Always having a, like a very premium and, and um, customized you know, approach for any brands. We think that every brands are different, so any products, any services are different, so we need to have a, a very different uh, campaign for anybody, you know, or for everybody. And 11 seconds on the clock, who has a quick question? Heather. What's your favorite color? <laughs> my, my favorite what? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Just having fun. One more. All right, Charles, thank you so much. Trade Labs. Actually, we have two more, Lisa, two more. So um, thank you guys for sticking around. Um, I know these lights, nights can get long, but we're a good company to be with on a random Wednesday. Uh, so thank you, sir. Let me shake your hand. Trade Labs. All right, where is uh, Jean-Marc or Jerem? Yes, sir. Coming up, this is Sublime Skins. Oui? C'est bon? That's good? No? I give up. The, you guys are knee deep in advertising and marketing. Yeah. Yeah and are going to show us uh, a new approach with regard to background styled advertising online. Yeah. Excellent. So let me just, just to manage the expectations. Uh, so we've got Sublime Skins up now. 
Magneto is next, and Gadi is sitting up here, ready to rock it for you all. Uh, he opted to go last, so uh, he's going to carry the show. He's our sweeper tonight. Um, and after that, we're going to do our SFNT Invest, OK? For those of you who are in the app, there's a tab in the, in the home screen for SFNT Invest. You got the email. You can go there. You can log in also. If you're not already rating the companies, go there now and do so, OK? Because this is how we gauge who in the room liked who the most. And then one company is going to walk out of here like, wow, five people liked me tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. That looks good. So do you guys want one microphone or two microphones or? Yeah. For you? OK, I think. Now I know why you weren't Hey. Cool. Hi. Um, I'm Jeremy, uh, chief operating officer and the co-founder of Sublime Skins. And I uh, am Wake, the uh, co-founder and CTO uh, at Sublime Skins, and also the the creator of uh, that unique technology what, uh, that uh, you, you will see. And if you search somewhere in the audience, you will find our, C our CEO uh, and co-founder, which is Jean-Marc. So uh, just like Charles did uh, two minutes ago, I would love to, to talk about advertising. You know, at Sublime Skins, um, we don't believe in intrusive banners, pop-ups, or video interstitials. That's why we've just created a next generation advertising platform dedicated on skin format. We created the company 18 months ago, and in 18 months, we've been from zero to $4 million of revenue without uh, raising any money. And we run more than 500 campaigns on uh, 500 campaigns for more than 40 leading media agencies in the world, um, on more than 1,500 websites, and for more than 100 million internet users. And I just start because we uh, right now here in the US, but. Let me, let me show you what is a, a skin. A skin is this very creative and very impactful um, ad banner that is displayed all around a website. On the top, you have the arch, and on the sides, you have what we call the, the wings. Um, and because it's supposed to be a demo today, uh, we're going to show you um, how we, we can uh, uh, create a, a video skin uh, from a video that we can take on YouTube. And we just need 10 minutes to create a video skin campaign and to run it on hundreds of websites. So, that's very easy. We just have to take the link of the video. Then we can book it in our ad server. Yeah, I'm not sure that I have the the um, the right Wi-Fi access, but I've already created the the, the video skins. Uh, I just need to to No, that's that's okay. I I just want to de zoom to Oh. That's what we call the demo effect in France. I don't know if you have the, right, the, the same word here. Oh, is it working? 
Yes, here it is. So this is, uh, this is a live sample of the, the video skins on uh, this website that you may know that is called Dailymotion. Um, and as you can see, we just uh, uh, took the, the, the video that we just uh, took on uh, YouTube and with a, a, a great HTML5 player, we displayed it all around the website on the skin area and to, to create this very impactful format. Uh, and we can do it very easily in 10 minutes uh, and display it on thousands or hundreds of websites. Yeah, because uh, to, to integrate uh, this format, the publisher of the website just have to put in this code just one line of, of JavaScript, and then he can run, uh, he can run uh, any campaigns without any setup. Thank you. Thank you. Let me take this one, you take this one. Merci. Okay, very cool, guys. Good stuff. Hey, uh, nice presentation. So is Dailymotion one of your uh, distribution channels for the videos? Cool. And uh, one question I had is a lot of people use ad block and things like that. Would, it, would your adverts be affected uh, by plugins like ad block uh, and similar ones? I don't know if you know ad block, it kind of yeah. removes, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this system is blocked by uh, ad block because uh, ad block blocks ads. But uh, this format is going to be eligible to uh, the non-intrusive uh, program of AdBlock. Right. So uh, soon uh, it, will, it will be visible even if you have AdBlock because it's a format that uh, respects users. Right, uh, but it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't affect the website, like it, it won't break the no, website. No, because it doesn't affect the website because the ad is only all around the, web, the website. Right. Okay. And not in the content. Get it. Very cool. Thank you. How do you guys work with regard to impressions versus click-throughs? Is there, is there value on the impression of the video if nobody clicks through on it? Like, is that one of the metrics you work against? Yeah. Um, we, the, uh, the media agencies or the trading desks uh, are buying us on a CPM or CPC model. It uh, depends on the buyers. Um, and in fact, this technology is uh, uh, already available on the programmatic side uh, uh, through the major DSP platform like AppNexus, uh, DBM, MediaMath, uh, and Turn, for example. Um, and then we pay uh, each impression, uh, in fact, it's, it's an, on a CPM basis uh, that we pay the, the publishers. Yeah. It was your, your question? Good. Yeah. Good for me. Okay. <laughs> Hi. So you're available to both advertisers and to websites that would run the ads, right? Yeah, we, 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 we work with both uh, of uh, these uh, players of the advertising market. On one side, with uh, the, the buyers are buying uh, our inventory, and we work with the publishers, and we pay them f uh, to broadcast our skin campaigns. I, th I think I, that I heard you say that JavaScript was necessary. Uh, how does your product work? on non-Java um, friendly platforms? Uh, unfortunately, uh, all, uh, web all ads uh, must uh, have a JavaScript enabled to, to work. So uh, if, we, if you don't have J JavaScript, you don't have ads, but you don't have um, most of websites because most of websites use JavaScript. So. What kind of CPMs are you seeing with this? Um, for we we pay uh, three dollars uh, of CPM 
Um, but uh, you are, you're, but if you have a SAT which uh, which is uh, which uh, performs very well for uh, advertisement, we uh, you can be paid more. Uh, you you can be, uh, for example, uh, it can raise to uh, six dollars, for example, for big website which uh, which uh, have a, a good performance and a quick to, uh, quick throw rates. In fact, we, uh, we guarantee a minimum CPM here in the US of $4 for, uh, so of CPM. And then as Emric just uh, told, um, we give uh, bonuses on the CPM basis and it can and go uh, uh, more than six, seven, sometimes eight dollars uh, for, for 1,000 impressions. All right, with seven seconds less left, I ask you, since you're in the advertising business, do you feel maybe you'd be better off in New York City? We've planned to have two offices, one here and one in New York. Yeah, Madison Avenue. Thank <laughs> or, you. Or close. Good stuff. Thank you very Sublime much. Sublime skins, nice work, guys. Thank you. Merci, thank you. Good stuff. Okay. So we've got one more demo, and then we're going to give away an Xbox Live tonight. And I think, Lisa, you have to be here to win, right? Yeah, because this thing is in the building. So that means that, like, of you guys, like, the odds are pretty good to win this thing. Last call for surveys. And I think there's a rule you're not allowed to put it on eBay, right? <laughs> you, have to go home and, you have to go home and play it and waste, waste your life away in entertainment. No, we have one more demo, one more. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I was sure. just, I was just yeah. saying. Oh, yeah, we got one more and then we're gonna do it. You can stay here if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got Magneto and then we're gonna give it away. Okay, uh, okay, we have to hold two hours. Well, we have to. Get her off my stage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it here for you guys to drool over and then in 10 minutes, come back in 10 minutes. You ready to roll? Oh, teamwork, I love it. Okay, yes. this is Magneto. Yes. You want two mics? We have this? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll use this one. I saw some people doing this. This is like a I... calendar like you've never seen before. What? Hey? It's like a calendar that and a to-do system you've seen never seen. before. Yes. Okay. Hit it. Say hi, Ellen. Hi. I'm Ellen, one of, of uh, three co-founders of Magneto. I am our head of product and user experience. And this is Gaudi, our CEO. And we're here to tell you about Magneto. We are in private beta, and we are reinventing the calendar to help you build a better day. Excellent. Yes? No? <laughs> no? Yes? Calendars are exciting. Yes. Can't, you're all going to walk today with um, Magneto calendar. So we do things that none of your calendars or your regular calendar cannot do. And I'm actually going to start with my lock screen, um, and then I'm going to unlock the, the uh, phone. Our calendar actually tell you when to leave. So if I have a meeting on my calendar, we automatically block travel time, and we also tell you when to leave to this meeting. So let, let's swipe into, um, uh, into my calendar. Now you all know my password. Excellent. Uh, and, and start looking at what Magneto offers. So the first thing we do at Magneto, and I'm kind of blind to use my glasses, the first thing we do at Magneto is we block travel time for every meeting you have. So when you block a customer meeting, this is my, my work in personal calendar, when I block a customer meeting at Netflix, Magneto will say, oh, we think you're going to leave from home, we think it's going to take you 51 minutes at this time of the day, and we actually block time uh, on your calendar, and it's not only for a next meeting, it's for any meeting you have. So here's my personal meeting with my doctor appointment. We block 30 minutes for that. And our mission is really help you never be late. By blocking time on your calendar, by estimating the right amount of time based on time of the day and traffic, we actually notify you when to leave for a meeting rather than the classic, oh, the meeting is going to start in 10 minutes. Now, we realize that in order to do that, we have to have addresses. So we made the entire creation process really easy. So if I have a meeting with someone, I wish I had a better keyboard. Um, at, you know, I know, I didn't want to download it just before the demo. Uh, 
And then this is gonna be inside glass. You can see there's an easy, super fast autocomplete. I can find the right location, and Magneto in real time will calculate the driving time for me and block it on my calendar. Uh, the other thing we'll do is we tell you when to leave based on real-time traffic, so if traffic changes, you can just sit back, relax, we'll tell you leave now, because traffic changed, and if you're already gonna be late, we're gonna allow you to notify people in one swipe. Now, uh, Heather's favorite feature, apparently, is, is um, our expense report. So you worked hard all your months and you traveled to meetings. You see that? Yay. Uh, and you wanna get, you gotta get your money back for all your travel. So we have a mileage reporting feature. One click, we get you all your trips into one report. Uh, you can easily modify them. For example, ah, this was a personal meeting, I, I tagged this work, so you can just, just remove it. Or this one actually um, return back, so I can add a return trip and add it to my report. And when I'm done, one click, it's in Expensify. If you use Expensify, one click, all your expenses are in Expensify. If you go to Expensify, you'll see that and we'll log in. You see all my uh, expenses that just came from Magneto as expense report. You click on it, you get reimbursed for your business travel. So this is feature number one. Now we did an analysis of people who drive for work and of people who drive for work. You know, they're using the travel times. They're driving an average of $47 a month by IRS mileage rates. So not everyone drives for work, but a lot of people do. And if you do, you're probably leaving money on the table that you could be getting reimbursement for. All right. Second thing I want to show you is how easy it is to enter meetings to Magneto. So Magneto has three different UIs. We have web UI, iOS, and an extension. So for example, we, had, we created a Facebook event for this meeting, and if you want to get it to your calendar, you don't have to copy paste things from different web pages. Magneto is actually everywhere you are. So one click on this Facebook event, we grab the title, we grab the date, time, we actually show you your calendar and availability here, so you know it's gonna overlap with your party. We get the address and we get your travel time. It's that simple. You can do the same thing with Eventbrite. One click, you get the meeting into, uh, into Magneto from Eventbrite, it's exactly the same uh, meeting we just created from, uh, from here. You wanna go to a lunch meeting, you're in Yelp, you wanna create a meeting, again, one click, and we grab the restaurant name, we grab the address, we grab the, the link, all I need to do is invite someone like, you know, my friend and save the meeting in Magneto. The last thing I wanna show you in my last 30 seconds is the web UI. Where is my web UI? Here's a web UI. And a third cool feature, which is our to-dos. So we realize that many of our users or many calendar users already use their calendar for to-dos. So we ask ourselves, is there a way to automate uh, to-dos in the calendar? And we've done it. The first thing we've done, we actually allow you to create to-dos in your calendar. And if you don't get them done, we bug you. So say, hey, you said you're gonna do it, and I'm sure I have something here. No, I don't, yes I do. Uh, here, incomplete task, wedding invite, you want to do that, you didn't get it done, uh, we allow you to reschedule it. The other thing we do is we recommend to-dos based on your week. So as you change your view and you look at different weeks, we're gonna recommend to-dos that are relevant to places or people or due dates. And lastly, if you want to just schedule a to-do, it's just easy to take a to-do, grab it to your calendar, and make time for it. And the same exact way, you can take a meeting, grab it out of your calendar, and get it to, to become a to-do. And we also show you your day on a map so you can kind of see, oh, I have a meeting here, but I have a to-do here. I can actually get done on my way from meeting one to meeting two. So this was a very quick demo of Magneto. Um, the most important thing is Magneto is, in, is uh, still in beta, but you all can download it uh, without waiting in line. There's no lines for Magneto right now for you. Uh, so it's magneto.me slash s slash SFNT, which would be easy to, um, to remember. This link will get you immediate access directly to our beta without waiting in line. Right on. Good stuff. Um, first off, somebody, somebody tweet that or somebody put that up on the, uh, the mobile app so we have it, yeah? Yeah, um, put it up. And I'm gonna start with a, with a question. Not to put you on the guys on the spot, but the calendar space is red hot nowadays. You, there's almost like every other day there's a new calendar app that comes out that says, oh, we're gonna get you into your meetings on time and you can ignore your, the conference code, pass codes, you've got that covered. How do you break out in such a hot space right now? It's a great question. Glad you asked. One of the things, one of the reasons that our approach is a little bit different is we've actually built an entirely new data and server layer. 
So we're not just a client sitting on your phone kind of sucking data. We have fully full cloud-based sync with Exchange and Google calendars. Uh, it's pretty easy for us to add additional clients, additional sync types. So we're actually, the fact that we sit on the server and everything happens on the server enables us to do a lot of things that other calendars just can't do. Uh, we also have some other features that we're not really talking about here that showcase that a little more, but they're still kind of under development, so. And you know, very quickly, the fact we're on web, on iOS as an extension, um, speaks to the fact that this is, this is a platform and not only an app on your phone that you can use today and not use tomorrow. Hey, how you guys doing? All right, so I use physical calendar. How can I integrate this into my physical calendar? OCR? No, but <laughs> I just don't want to print it out. I'm, I'm concerned about privacy, and my physical calendar is a way that I can keep notes and keep track of my thoughts and the things that I, you know, really work on. So that's a concern. I, it's a question I actually don't know how to answer. I have an answer. Are you writing emails or letters to your friends, my? I write emails. Okay, there's your answer. <laughs> You got to move it over, dude. It's all digital now, right? That's the answer. You could maybe invent a secret language for yourself just to use in the calendar. Use Hebrew. Not too many people speak that I do, but. Or emoji. Or emojis. Uh, for the, um, for your, you say you integrate with Google uh, Calendar, so does that mean that if I have a client for Google Calendar, it, I will see all the events of this into Google Calendar and vice versa? Or do I have to ditch Google Calendar and use just this? full two-way sync. So you connect through OAuth, and it'll keep everything on Google Calendar, on Magneto, and vice versa. Perfect. You don't have an Android app yet, right? So Not yet, but okay. we plan to later this year. Okay, cool. Thanks. And because it's server-based, by the way, some of the features you're going to get even if you use your Android client. For example, travel time will be calculated every time we see a meeting with an address, regardless of the client you're using. It all happens in a server. And that drive time will get, or travel time will get synced back to Google, and then you can pick it up on your Android device. Uh, same, same sort of integration with iCal, so your, your iOS calendar can be synced as well? Not yet, but that's one of the things on our list. Okay, gotcha. No, just kidding. Gotcha. Uh, so what about providing more information about the people I'm meeting with? Really awkward to try and track three different calendars, one that's doing driving times, another that's doing social, and another that's doing notes. Well, so there's a, a couple ways to answer that. I think your direct question sounded like getting more information about people immediately. And there's a lot of great and interesting things that we kind of are planning to do. Um, Magneto will let you sync both a personal and work calendar. One of the big things that we talk about is truth in calendaring and making sure that you can see your entire life all at once. So that means you can add a Google calendar, you can add an exchange calendar, maybe you do consulting work on the side. You can pull all of that in together and see them all at once every day. Uh, no, actually, I was getting towards uh, integration with LinkedIn and being able to pull on things oh. about the people themselves at the meeting, not just how long does it take me to get there. So good question. Expect, it's actually my first topic on my, if you look at my real calendar, it's actually my first meeting tomorrow. Uh, expect some announcement in this area soon. And we'll try to do things better than everybody else. So should we try with everything else? <laughs> But yes, uh, we don't have, we, we show picture, we show some basic information, we're gonna show much more very soon. Joe, you have a question? Yeah, uh, question. Uh, I think something that I think would be really interesting and uh, would be, and this is that I talked to, you know, companies like Eventbrite and stuff that has a lot of different interesting events. Uh, a way to actually make that useful for people would be to integrate it to your calendar, right? Because I'd wanna see events that, that I know I'm available for, right? And so, so that would be really interesting to see, like, if you're going to integrate my calendar and consolidate it, if I have a bunch of white space there and I'm not doing anything, maybe you can, you know, work with Eventbrite and companies like that to propose some, some uh, ideas uh, of things that I might want to do. Absolutely. Like, and imagine it's inflected by people you know and people you commonly meet with and all sorts of other That's cool not ideas. as relevant for me if it's more of like that something that I'm interested in, but more so, can I make it or not? That's the most yeah. important thing, right? Don't show me something if I can't make it, right? But sure. Anyway. Thank you. It's part of the vision. It's a great question. Yeah. And we're available in UK too, by the way. Yeah. Just to. Available in UK too. I thought you were from... Oh, it's maybe because just ask about what's queue in London. 
All right, so I see three zeros on the clock. We're out of time. All right. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank you. Excellent. I love it. Got it. Thank you. What do you see? What do you see? Yeah. What does it say on it? All right. For you guys that stuck around, you're in luck. Because one of you guys who filled out the survey from Microsoft will come, walk away with a, uh, what do these go for now? Like $600, $500, dollars $500 worth of Microsoft awesomeness, uh, Xbox One. Um, and uh, app, it has IE on it. <laughs> wow, I love it. Um, and afterwards, we're going to open the bar in the back. And if you guys want to hang out for a little while, please do. That's what this is all about. And aside from that, can I quickly tell everybody about our future events before we do this? And then we'll be done. OK, so if you guys are not reading my emails, and I know that a certain percentage of you do, but there's a certain percentage that don't. Um, our next event is on the 3rd of June. That's next Tuesday. We partnered with Merriman Capital. And we're producing what we're calling the Digital Currency Summit. The ripple effect, anybody following Bitcoin or alternative currencies would have great interest in this panel. I don't have the list in front of me, but we have all stars uh, that are coming down to talk about the impact of digital currencies and cryptocurrencies and the future of uh, how you might be transacting online. It's a half day event. It starts at noon, it ends at five, it's at the One Kearney Club. There's a higher ticket price for this because it's very exclusive. We were only allowed to invite 20 people to this thing. The rest is gonna be filled with all these Wall Street guys that have a ton of money. So if you wanna be in that crowd, go to our website, you can find out more information on that. Um, following that, we have an event on the 18th of June uh, that is gonna focus on wedding technology. Yeah, <laughs> who knew, who knew? But yes, if you are a bride or a wedding planner, technology has come to save your life and save the day. There are a lot of new companies out there that are serving that super lucrative market. And we're gonna zero in on a, on a number of startups uh, focusing on wedding technology. That's June 18th, and we're gonna do that at Rocket Space. A little bit of a twist, uh, we'll be right downtown at Rocket Space. Um, after that, uh, we welcome the Belgians to town. Uh, the web mission is coming back, and we are very, very proud to welcome back our friends from Belgium. Uh, that is the 26th, that's a Thursday, and right after that event that's gonna be here, we'll hear from a half a dozen or so Belgian startups that are kicking ass, and afterwards, there's a full-on like international DJ like kick-ass show that's gonna start. I have, if you haven't already guessed that this technology isn't really what this place is all about, this is like the number one dance club in the city. So come to the Belgian Tech Club, come for the tech, hang out for the party. That's what I have to say about that. Um, and then moving into July, we're doing a special event on the, uh, I wanna say the 9th of July, uh, that's the Wednesday, uh, at uh, AKQA, which you may have heard of. It's an international, or shall I say global marketing firm that's really, really, really uh, knee deep in technology. Um, so we're doing a very special event over at their headquarters. And then after that, we have an event on the 16th, right back here at Mighty. And I have to say, I forgot one. <laughs> June 11th, rewind. June 11th, we're right back here at Mighty focusing on mobile, largely mobile. So if you've got a, an app with, uh, that's kicking ass in mobile, we wanna hear about it, but we're pretty much buttoned down from that. You're gonna hear about that in the next couple of days. Are we busy? Yeah, um, that's it for, for what I have to say. Okay, let's give this thing away. How are we gonna do this now? All right, I'm gonna draw right here. You wanna help me out? How are we gonna do it? We just pick one of these? Mm -hmm. We're gonna... I've been shuffling. Where's the dude with the, with the, the calendar? Look, paper, man, see? You're on it. <laughs> this guy's forward thinking. <laughs> just scan it. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go like this. Is this fair? Does this look fair to you guys? You got a lot of responses. This is good. All right, here's the winner. And you have to be here to win it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The winner is, is Missy Manachek here. Monchik. Yeah. Missy's in the house. Missy's a regular at SF New Tech. 
and God knows she's gonna spend all day playing Xbox. Right on, Missy. Woo! Somebody take a picture <laughs> and put it on the app. <laughs> Carrie, get over here with your camera, damn it. Quick, dude. <laughs> Cheers to that. All right. Nice work. So, um, thank you to Microsoft. Thank you, Missy. So we're going to see Microsoft back in our in, in our world on uh, the uh, at the mobile event on the 11th. Excuse me, June 11th. They'll be back in the house, and we're going to be talking about Bing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for your feedback and for coming out. Uh, can't wait to see you next month. Cool. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you to Twitter, thank you to Lisa, thank you to KSVN TV and Jimmy G, thank you to Fathom Law, thank you to Social Greg. Oh, we, yeah, SF and Teen Best, you guys have been voting. Let's turn, flip the switch. If you didn't lock in your votes, I wish, I urge you to do so now so we can award somebody, it looks like somebody's gonna take it home and that's gonna be Flexi tonight. Are, are you participating? Are you opting out of the participation? because I'll kill this now. If you guys are still voting, let me know. Still voting, still voting. This is like, this is a freebie, guys. This is like fun. Come on, just do it. Happy, happy. Make a startup happy. Anyway, everybody was given a million dollars tonight and this was dispersed uh, this way. I'm sorry about the screen there, but it looks like Flexi took home uh, $320,000 tonight. And had there been more people participating, that would have been 3.2 million, so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll write you a check later, it's okay. Um, but we're gonna award you uh, a subscription to Founder Suite if you choose to use it, and you get to go home saying that you were the crowd favorite tonight at SF New Tech. So congratulations to that. SF New Tech Invest, thank you, Social Greg. Thank you, Chris, thank you to Mighty, and thank you to you guys for being here. Come on back, that's it, let's see you at the bar. Cue music. We're done. Thank you.